Hello everyone, my name is Jack Randall and I'm a zoologist and wildlife TV presenter. My job involves studying the animal kingdom, IDing species and how they relate to each other, mapping the habitats that they live in and learning more about their populations out in the wild. The information we gather as zoologists is important to making conservation plans for these animals. When I was younger, all I dreamed of was exploring the wild. It started off with a fascination for monkeys. I remember watching Tarzan and his life in the rainforest, living alongside chimpanzees. In this beautiful picture of life, man lived with wildlife, being part of their world, living harmoniously together. Being connected to the wild is part of our very nature. I grew up in the countryside in Oxfordshire in the UK. I lived in a small village where there was no playground but my garden backed onto a forest. It was only a small piece of land, but I would go there with my brother and our friends and play hide and seek. It was a fun place. Staying there till sunset and being called in for dinner was part of a routine. We got to know that place intimately. I now get the same feeling when I explore a wild place day in, day out. The place at first, it feels disorientating, but over time, Every branch and hole that once felt a hazard and out of place, it just fits in. Just as much as the sofa does in the living room or the kettle in the kitchen, it becomes a home. This is how the animals feel here. The foxes, the badgers, the hedgehogs and the robins. I recently went back to my old childhood home. That wild place I loved, it was gone. The house is still standing, but the wild place behind the garden, it's now a housing estate. Where did these animals go? The reality is, the world over the past 100 years has had a rapid change on the human population, growing from 5 billion from when I was born to 8 billion now. Rural areas are being rapidly urbanized. We're seeing a barrage of viral videos of wild animals wandering into our backyards, crossing roads, or taking a dip in our pools. Some of these interactions are fascinating to us, or sometimes funny, sometimes portrayed as animals taking over and being a threat to us. But these animals, they're homeless. They have nowhere else to go. Over the past 15 years, working in the field as a zoologist and filmmaker, I've seen the impacts of development on animal homes, not just in my own backyard, but all across the globe. I made my first ever film after graduation up in Australia. My friend and I followed the story of a company that wanted to mine bauxite at the Steve Irwin Wildlife Reserve, a pristine habitat in far north Queensland, home to unique species such as a rare palm cockatoo. To extract the bauxite, it meant clear felling the forest. The trees that the palm cockatoo roost in would be gone forever. Fortunately, over a five-year battle campaign, the mine was halted and the reserve was saved. But the surrounding regions have not escaped. I recently returned to that region and was staggered to see how expansive the mines have become. The result is, the palm cockatoo this year was listed as endangered and only 2,000 remain. In our very own lifetime, the palm cockatoo could go extinct. After I finished that film, looking for a new subject, I noticed while reading the newspaper, on the third page, there was a picture of a massive green anaconda being pulled out of the ground by a digger. It was the site of a new dam being built in the Amazon, the Belamonte Dam, a huge hydroelectric project. With my fascination for anacondas, I went there to see if I could find out more. Over a four week expedition, I managed to collect DNA from specimens of anacondas for further research. But what became evident was that there was so much pressure being put on the Amazon, not only by the dam causing flooding of habitats, but also by clear felling for agriculture. Three years ago, fires across the Amazon became headline news. The area where the dam is had the largest fires of all regions in Brazil. It's because these impacted forests are unstable and more vulnerable to forest fires. The stories continue everywhere I go. The result is that there are now one million species of plants and animals at risk of extinction, according to the UN. I often get asked, nine times out of 10 by children, 
what can we do to save our wildlife? My only answer to this question is, I believe we must all be local zoologists. We must step into our wild places and familiarise ourselves. After all, these places are not just home to the wildlife, but also to us. All life is connected. Do we, want, do we want to be known as the generation that helped save our planet, or the generation that helped destroy it? I believe it is our responsibility to protect habitats that allows the coexistence for all those who call this planet their home for many generations to come.